Washington Journal continues. If you picked up Time magazine this week, this is the picture you're going to see on the cover of the special issue. It was taken by Doug Mills, who is the chief Washington photographer for the Associated Press and joins us this morning. Good morning, Mr. Mills. Good morning, Tom. How was this picture taken? Uh, it was taken under uh, not normal circumstances, obviously. Um, uh, pretty busy day up in New York with the president there visiting the firefighters and victims. Um, a lot of pushing and shoving, a lot of uh, yelling and screaming by local officials, law enforcement, Secret Service, everybody trying to make sure the president was secure in that area. Um, luckily was able to get up close enough with a, a lens, wide-angle lens, and um, capture the moment. How has security changes in the past week affected your job? Not a lot. It hasn't really affected us a lot. We, we, the Secret Service and the White House staff um, have worked, you know, hand in hand with us in, through this whole, whole ordeal. Um, we see more security probably at the gates, at the Northwest Gate coming into the White House. Uh, they look through our stuff a little more. But there has, hasn't been that many restrictions upon us so far. Except if you live in Northern Virginia, your traffic is Traffic horrible. is horrendous, right. <laughs> and, the, and the streets around Washington and around the White House last week were, were pretty bad. Where were you last Tuesday? Last Tuesday, we started out in Sarasota, Sarasota Florida with the president. I was um, on the trip. Uh, we went down there on Monday. Uh, we were doing an education event. Um, this is a normal trip for you? Normal trip. Quick, in and out. Down with the president on Monday, overnight in Sarasota. Back on Tuesday afternoon after an education event. And then uh, home, and then next day, back at the White House on Wednesday. You brought with you a series of photos on your laptop that we're going to be able to show our viewers of things that you took over the week. Tell us a little bit about it. Just walk us through it. Well, the day start started out with uh, that Tuesday morning. Uh, the president went for a jog, um, pre-dawn jog. I think he ran a little over six miles. Obviously, normal situation. You know, Everything was the him. same. We don't jog with him. There were a couple of reporters that did run with him, yes. And then we went to this education event. And um, as we pulled into the education event, there were cell phones uh, in the motorcade that were going off. And people were getting calls about a plane crash in New York. Um, we didn't know the, you know the circumstances that the plane crash was. Uh, we were told that it was a commercial airline. Uh, and that's all we knew. We went into the event. And everything seemed pretty normal. The president was there, smile on his face, chatting with the children, um, interacting with the students, the teacher, and so forth. And um, I'd say about five or six minutes into the event, Andy Carr, the chief of staff for the president, walked over to the president and whispered something into his ear. It was only later what we found out is what he said. And um, he had told the president that a second aircraft had hit the World Trade Center and that America was under attack. Here you're with the president in Air Force One? Yes. Went to, went to within New Nebraska? Went to, uh, with Louisiana first. That's right. Uh, had no idea where, where we were going when we left uh, Florida. Um, these are the, air, uh, the fighter aircraft that escorted Air Force One around that day. Um, this is the president coming back to Andrews that, that late in that day, once we were heading back to uh, Washington. He addressed the nation that evening. And the next day, a series of meetings with national security advisors, um, Congress, um, memorial services, and then uh, on to New York. So it's been a horrific week. And this is here. This is uh, the president here meeting with uh, members of Congress. How long do you usually get to stay at those meetings? Um, we're usually in those meetings about 30 to 60 seconds, unless That's it. the president talks. Right. Yep. That's about it. So it's quick. Heard it in, heard it out. Heard it in, heard it out. A lot of pushing and shoving. How but did this picture come about? This picture was taken a uh, very emotional moment, probably one of the most emotional moments I've ever you know, been involved with in the Oval Office. Uh, the president had spoken with uh, Governor Pataki uh, and Mayor uh, Giuliani up in New York and uh, answered questions from the press about uh, the circumstances uh, that had happened. And uh, he became very emotional. I mean, it's eyes welled up, uh, very, uh, you know, very tearful uh, event. Uh, this was, this picture here was taken just as we arrived in New York City for that on Friday. And this is him greeting here the firefighters just after arrival, right down near the World Trade Center. Here he's getting a little assessment from the, uh, the mayor and Senator Schumer. Then 
into the crowd to greet, talk to the firefighters. He spoke a lot to the firefighters. He, uh, you know, every one of them gave words of encouragement. He gave words back. Then he crawled up under this rubble. You know, it was, uh, you know, I get chills looking at him now, looking at these pictures because, uh, you know, here was the old firefighter, the president there with him. And then at the end, uh, someone handed him a flag and he raised it up. And only did we find out afterwards that the, uh, the rubble that he's standing on, you'll see a picture of him climbing off right here. This is actually a fire truck that he's climbing off of. That had been Underneath the rubble? Smushed down to probably two or three feet. This picture here was taken on his return from Camp David, where he spoke about the four aircraft that had hit the, hit, uh, the nation. Um, spoke at length to reporters, reiterating his, his feelings about uh, finding this ter these terrorists and hunting them down. This here, he's walking from the old executive office building uh, over to greet workers on that Monday morning. And this was the security outside as he went over. Flag draped there on the uh, old executive office building. He's greeting employees here. And we've seen, you know, we've obviously seen his mood change all week. It's, you know, he, he has, uh, he's been uh, very focused and, and it's, it's visible. How long have you been a photographer? I've been with the Associated Press um, 14 years, uh, all in Washington, and um, been covering the White House since 1984. And what before then? I worked for the Fairfax Journal in Northern Fairfax Virginia. Fairfax County, Northern Virginia? Yes, yes. How'd you make the leap? I just uh, luckily um, got in touch with the right people at the right time, was, were, was making uh, a great deal of uh, sports pictures. Uh, I love shooting sports, and uh, um, that uh, was, I think, my leap from the Fairfax Journal into UPI. I went to United Press International and then on to AP. Now, some may say there's a big leap between sports and politics. Do there's you have to know your topic? To take your photo. Absolutely, you have to be very well read on what what the circumstances are, what what's in the news. You have to really understand the president's uh, team, who his advisors are, who are the important ones, and um, and know what your subject's doing. Our phone lines are open if you'd like to join us to talk about uh, this past week that, that Doug Mills has experienced in some of his, of his photographs. You'll see the phone numbers at the bottom of your screen. Take us back now when you left Florida okay. and you're on your way out. What happened? Well, when we left Florida, we were, you know, the, he, the president addressed the nation explaining that there had been a plane crash in New York. At that time, um, two planes had hit the World Trade Center, and that was the extent of the story at that point. Uh, we thought we were going back uh, to Washington. We had boarded Air Force One. Um, and like no other times before, normally they have, we have um, TVs in our cabins, as in every cabin on Air Force One. And normally we can watch a movie if there's time. And um, on this day, the, the television was live and it was showing the events unfolding in New York. And as we were flying 35, 40,000 feet, we could see the, you know, replays of the planes hitting the World Trade Center. And then up flashed that the Pentagon had been struck. And it really took a, you know, took us on a completely different turn. I think then they realized that we couldn't go back to Washington. And um, we didn't. We were told that we weren't going back to Washington. We didn't know where we were going. They knew, obviously. President staff knew. They uh, were, you know, J Gordon Jandro in the lower press office was, you know, very informative to us. He, he explained everything that we were doing, explained how... Except where you were going. Except where we were going. And how did you know, when did you know that you were, that you were dropping into Louisiana? When we landed. And, we, and when we landed, asked yes. Where you were? Yeah, we didn't know where we were. We asked, we were told not to use our cell phones, not to use our pagers. Um, they, How'd you get in touch with AP? I could not. We, they wouldn't allow us to use our phones. We were pretty, pretty well secured up in a package of uh, probably 12 or 13 people, and we couldn't. Uh, it was at, uh, once the president made his statement, then they allowed us to uh, tell uh, AP where we were. Um, obviously, I called home also to uh, assure my wife that everything was okay, my family. Um, 
And uh, then we were back on the plane again. We, we left Louisiana without an idea of where we were going. The pool, all of a sudden, a pool of 14 journalists that fly on Air Force One was reduced to five people. The staff was reduced. The Air Force was reduced. The, the plane was, I wouldn't say empty, but it was very different. The, the amount of staff that, was, that, were, that were on the plane was, was reduced dramatically. You were one of the five? Yes, yes. Were you the only print photographer? I was the only still photographer, Still yes. photographer, yes. excuse me. Only and, still photographer. And does that mean that you would then be sharing your photos with I, other? Right, sharing with the other wires. Become the agencies. pool, they call I, it. Right, exactly. So let's take some calls for you. Clover City, California, as we continue to look at some of Doug Mills' photographs. Go ahead, Clover City. Uh, yes, good morning. I realize that uh, as a photographer, your um, desire or job is to take the pictures uh, that we see. But what do you have an opinion? What do you feel when you're taking the pictures? I, not being a photographer, am angry that the United States, uh, our security, with the most modern technology that we have, um, that we were not more secure. I'm angry that we sit in our homes thinking that we are secure. Um, and then, too, I was looking for the United States to apologize to the citizens that this had happened. But from a ph photographer's point of view, do you have an opinion? Uh, well, I think our job is really to, to photograph and capture whatever the president is doing, what situations he's in, um, and try and document those. Uh, the thousands of newspapers that uh, the Associated Press um, has members, uh, they, they want to see what the president's doing. They want to be well informed. Um, as far as a, an opinion, I really don't, you know, I, we, we're at the, at the mercy of the, the president during these events. We are um, basically there just to capture whatever he's doing, you know, and, and not take an opinion. Doug Mills' photograph was on the front page of the New York Post on Saturday. This is what it looked like. Next call for him is from Baltimore, Maryland. Good, good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'd like to talk about the heart of terrorism that has taught the children at a young age to believe that their God is right and our God is a devil. And I'd like to applaud uh, President Bush and his cabinet for doing what they're doing as far as going after these gangsters, because that's all they are is gangsters, religious gangsters, and I wouldn't even call it religious. They have to be watched and downgraded every day, every month, and every year until they become what they normally should be, people that enjoy life, not people that destroy life. Thank you, caller. Another one of Doug Mills' photos from the front page of the New York Times on Saturday as we take a call from Homo Sassa, Florida. Yes. Um, I was wanting to know how he felt that the president uh, was uh, conducting himself and, and if there was any feelings of, of his own, you know, not being able to do anything to, to help anybody at, at all in a... In a uh, a short period of time being able to react and and do something that the american people can can really see and feel besides uh... the emotions and the feelings that the president was having towards the whole situation Did you get any feelings of frustration from him from the president mm, yes i thought uh, i think he really you know from what we hear now and and it was obviously or it was obvious listening to the president that day that he wanted to get back to washington he wanted to get back here and uh, I think we've heard since then that the vice president had advised against that because things really were uncertain. There was no idea what was next, if there was anything next. Was there ever a time during that day when you were told not to take any photographs? Um, no, not really, not that I, no, there, were, there wasn't any moments. I think um, when I was taking pictures of Air Force One being guarded uh, with a soldier standing in front of Air Force One, the soldier there, was uh, adamant that I get on the bus and, and get moving. Um, the pictures of the of the F-16s off the wings wing of Air Force One um, that happened so fast it was quite a shock to us on board. You'd never seen that before. Never, never seen it, and so close. I mean, they were you could see the pilots. Um, 
there was concern that we were photographing him, but Ari Fleischer assured us that it was okay. There were questions at first about whether we should be doing that and whether it was at all, um, you know, wise to be doing that. But when, when you landed in Omaha, where did you go? When we landed in Omaha, we were, uh, it was a very unusual situation. Normally you see a, a presidential limo, uh, motorcade and so forth, a limousine. They had a van, a, a, a regular caravan with non-tented window, windows. The president got on board this van um, and we were, I got in the back of another van which didn't have a seat in the back of it and it was very quick, it was very, um, it was organized but not Stru you know, structured at all. Where'd you go? We went straight uh, to the Strategic Air Command Center, and um, by the time our van got into the area, because I guess normally vehicles aren't allowed into that area, uh, the president was already down in the bunker. We could see some of the staff going down into this to the bunker. Did you take any photos of the bunker? No, we weren't allowed to. Next call, Denver. Morning. Morning. Uh I want to say thank you very much to Mr. Mills on the wonderful photos that he has shared, shown us this morning. Caller, uh, let me just ask you to stop for a minute. Can I ask you to re-rack those photos and possibly start them again? Sure. That'd be great. So maybe our viewers who just saw it once going through could watch it again. Go ahead, there Caller. Yes, because I think it's very important, um, the reality of what has happened in our country. It, it's being played over for us by these wonderful photographers. I've been listening to the callers on the Washington Journal for several days now, and it really saddens my heart to hear people pointing the blame at our wonderful president, people putting the blame on religious differences, on um, strategic planning. Instead, maybe we should put some energy out there on hoping that all of our nation's leaders come to clarity on what should be done with these terrible, catastrophic events. Because the bottom line is, is we are not talking about a little oil spill, a chemical spill, a religious difference. What we are talking about is somebody coming in and directly attacking innocent people, innocent lives, without any warning or what I would say, any real reason. Thank, thank you, Denver. Any reaction to that call? It's, again, it's just, um, it's been a difficult week for all of us here in Washington. And Sacramento, you're next. Go ahead. Good morning. Morning. Thank you. I'm a radio journalist here in California, and I've been subjected to the pictures and images maybe more than even the average person having to cover everything that's going on. And I've been grateful, as I've covered this, that the media seems to have refrained from gruesome photos. You know, we've seen things like that from other countries when there have been wars and, and terrorist acts. I'm curious to know if the media just a hush across uh, the nation said we're not going to do this or if there have been directives from bosses if uh, whether this has been something that the media has chosen to do it's just very interesting to me that we haven't seen that I just wondered what you might have to say about that I don't think there's been any any um, effort to to not show anything that that has been photographed or seen in New York I think um, one of my colleagues took one of the most disturbing pictures I've seen in this whole ordeal were the people leaping from the World Trade Center because of the heat and, um, and those pictures were in the paper the first, uh, the day after. Uh, Richard Drew from AP in New York um, made a, just an a unbelievable picture and every time anybody would look at it um, there was a reaction and I don't think that anybody has uh, tried to hide anything. Um, we hear stories of the aftermath of the destruction, decapitated bodies right. in this in this effort. Do, do photojournalists just stay away from that? I don't know. I, Is there a different standard for here in the United States than in other countries? Hmm. I, I'm not sure. I would say, I think because of the the uncertainty of the Trade Center fault is you know when the building fell that a lot of people fled fearing their life. Uh, there were I, I I don't know if there were any photographers killed. Um, but I, uh, I, I don't know if they had that sort of access or they saw any of that. And if they have, we haven't seen it. Maybe there, maybe there is an effort that I'm not aware of, but I, I'm, I'm not aware, aware of one. An email question to you. Certainly. In an emergency, if you could bring only one lens with you, what would it be? Great, great question. 
while we do that, why don't you show I, us your camera? I would say it would probably be this lens. It would be a 17 to 35 millimeter. Um, we use digital cameras. Um, all of these images that you're seeing are um, taken with a digital camera. And um, this, the digital age has changed our job dramatically. How? Well, because inside that camera is a little disc and right after I take took these pictures or take a picture that disc goes directly into my laptop I become the editor I become the person who transmits and sends that wirelessly back to my office so there there's no more film there's no processing and, it, and it's minutes afterwards minutes after this after the president held that flag up I was in the van which in the motorcade with my laptop looking at those images transmitting those images with a with a uh, Sprint air card and my Nextel phone right from the van as we were going down the road. You crop your own photos then? Crop them, put a caption on them. You caption your own photos? Yes. How unusual is that? Uh, it, it's very common now. We do it to every, every picture. But every so picture there are has people to have, back at the they, back room They room will check for writing. spelling and check for um, any other updates to a, to a story that you may be covering, a quote. We often uh, will download from, from our um, news desk quotes that our reporters have taken and cut and paste those into our captions. So when the pictures go to New York, they have a, caps a picture with a caption, full information, and it's ready to go to, its m to the members. So back to the question, what kind of lens is this? This is a wide angle lens. It would, it's a 17 to 35, which would allow me to basically document um, you know any sort of situation with a wide angle if I had a longer lens depending on the event really but but I think the the wide angle would be the way to go next call Overland Park Kansas good morning good morning um, I really appreciate your pictures and, and especially the way that you've shown them this morning in the sequence that just tells a great story it seems I've always been struck by President Bush he shows so much of his emotion on his face and I was wondering how you felt about him as a subject to photograph and then also um, when he was in Florida I've seen some videotape of him uh, getting that message from um, his uh, from Andrew Card and and I was struck the way he was able to um, continue on with the children and I wonder what your impression was after he had learned that that he was able to finish out a session and, and then, um, you know, leave without scaring them. Uh, I, that took a lot of, um, a lot of focus on, by the president because obviously he's in an event talking to children, talking about education, tragic thing, tragic event unfolds. He's informed that by the chief of staff that the, pre or that the America is under attack um, Are you always shooting? So you knew, or do you I knew. I knew it was so unusual for the chief of staff to walk into an event that was where the president was talking, or where someone else was talking, and whisper something into his ear. Something had to be going on, and knowing in the back of my mind that there had been a plane crash, um, what I, I obviously didn't know what he was going to tell him. But clearly, after the president, after Andrew Card stepped back the look on the president's face uh, was in total disbelief. I mean, I, I can't imagine what was going through his mind. Um, and yes, he did continue in, on in the, in the classroom. He spoke uh, to the teacher for a few more minutes. Um, obviously, everybody in the room now's, now was aware that a second plane had crashed into the World Trade Center. Um, he obviously wanted to continue this event as much as he could. Um, he, he stayed with, this, with the children, um, spoke a few more minutes, and then said he had to leave. Reporters asked him immediately while we were in the classroom, sir, sir, what, what's going on with the World Trade Center? What do you know? And he said, I'll have a statement for you in a couple minutes. And we were whisked into another room uh, where there was a huge I think it was a gymnasium set up where he was going to speak to uh, education leaders and so forth. And um, they said the president will be making a statement and we're leaving for Washington immediately. How is covering this administration different from covering the previous administration? Did you cover President Clinton? Yes, I did. How is it different? Not, not much difference. Um, the, 
the staffs of both administrations, as far as the press, have been very helpful. Um, the Bush administration staff, given the fact that they've been there nine months, and to have this on their plate now, they've handled it, you know, from from our perspective, very well. Um, we haven't uh, had too many complaints, and we've seen the president. My goodness, three. Or, normally, we'd see him once or twice a day for different events, whatever the message is. Um, and now we're seeing him, you know, multiple times a day, three or four events a day. Obviously, uh, they're not restricting media coverage of him. He's been talking to the media nonstop. There are more quotes um, that the reporters have been getting. Um, obviously, the photographers have been very busy going to New York. He went to the Pentagon. Um, so, and I think he's in this afternoon, uh, or actually this morning, about an hour and a half, he's starting to meet with world leaders, and they'll be in the Oval Office all, all day, and we will too. Spartansburg, South Carolina. Uh, yes, good morning. Uh, I appreciate your photos. Uh, uh, first of all, I'd like to just say I support the president, support his staff. Uh, I think we have a wonderful leadership as far as um, uh, Secretary of Defense, Secretary of State, and so on. I think this is a wonderful team that he has assembled with him. But I think that, uh, I, as I've been thinking through the days, that I would like to hear more from the religious world in the Middle East as far as from Mecca, as far as the religious leaders there coming out and speaking. I'd also like to hear just more from the leaders over there. Uh, I mean, other than a few condolences and, and statements that have been read, uh, even Arafat, as far as even him resigning from the PLO, or, or there being more statements, uh, a, con a combination coming forth from the Middle East. It's been very low-key. I know it's, it's, a, it's a, a dangerous world that they live in, but look at us. Look at how we're suffering. Okay, thank you, caller. Taking it back to a, a photojournalist mm -hmm. kind of aspect of it, do you, does the Associated Press have uh, photographers in different parts of, of the Middle East, in yes. Asia? Yes, we working have. Working this story? Yes, uh, I saw a colleague uh, of mine's byline this morning, Jerome DeLay. Um, and we have a, um, a huge team there. Um, we don't, is it, is it, fa is the caller's criticism fair? Uh, and taking it only from a photographer's point of view, are we seeing enough pictures in that part of the world? I don't, I don't know how much there is to photograph right now. Obviously, everybody would like to, to, um, anything really to, I mean, obviously people are fleeing. People are on the border. There, there, there's food, you know, there's going to be fo food shortage and, there are going to be people starving there, and there are people, you know, trying to get around the border. Um, I don't know what the access to that area is right now, and I'm sure photographers there are working under probably the most difficult situations there are. Hawaii, you're next. Good morning. Hi, good morning. My name is Sophie. I'm from Lahaina, Maui. I'm a mother of six. Although the prospects of war, you know, really does put a little scare in any mother's heart, I wanted to um, congratulate President Bush on the compassion also that he's showing in, in the view of all the terror that's going on in the world. I think that he's setting a good example for us all to finally show compassion for each other. It, without compassion in the United States that has been sorely lacking um, on a really large level in you know in the world especially in the united states you don't see that outpouring of compassion amongst people anymore and i think he's setting a great example of even knowing being forceful and being um like security minded he still comes through as showing that compassion and teaching us a lesson of still being the bigger person in the world and i really appreciate seeing that in his emotions and sh seeing that he's a man not only a leader and you know, that's what I wanted to say. Thanks, Hawaii. Can you tell me a little bit about this picture? Uh, that picture was probably one of the, uh, another moment that, that I'll never forget as far as stepping off of Air Force One. I mean, I can't tell me how many times people have told me that, oh, you're always on the safest aircraft in the world, and clearly you're always safe. Um, when we landed in um, Louisiana, um, we got off of Air Force One, and we looked around, and there were gentlemen with, you know, M16 rifles, and they were surrounding the plane. And it was quite shocking to look through the wheels and the, the tail section uh, of Air Force One and to see a soldier running with a rifle. It really 
heighten the, the anxiety, the fear. Uh, obviously, uh, I didn't feel unsafe, but I felt uncertain. You know, there was, I think that was part of the whole day was what's next, you know? What, what awful thing could happen next, you know? And, and um, luckily, it, it stopped where it did. Um, but the, the day just, you know, everybody kept saying it's like a bad movie. You just, you just continually, you know, insecurities on the plane, talking to other staffers on the plane, talking to my colleagues. Um, a total disbelief, shock. I mean, by everybody watching it on the plane unfold in front of us while we're flying, you know, it's just remarkable. The pictures that we've seen today reflect those, I don't know, X number of how many you might have taken that day. How many did you shoot? Uh, on Tuesday, probably in upwards of uh, Tuesday, probably at least 50 to 100, maybe 100 pictures at least. That so I, that I didn't actually, you know, that, that were on my disc, I didn't crop and tone, like the picture mm -hmm. there, there were mm -hmm. three or four frames before, and he was yelling at me, the soldier yelling at me to get on the bus. Um, I could have moved those, but that, that was the best moment from, from that event. Um, and that's basically what, you know, there were a lot of events that day, and trying to pull out as an editor, uh, and a photographer, you have to pull out those events, or those moments um, from each event, the Are you highlights. Are going to do a book on this? Oh, I don't know. I, have you ever done a photography book? No, I've never done a book, no. Ever considered it? I've thought about it, I've thought about it, but I, I think um, there, this would just probably be a small portion of a huge book within the, within the AP. You know, it's just a small piece of the pie that my colleagues in New York and here in Washington uh, have been working around the clock. Um, and it, uh, pictures of the president are a small part of the story. Doug Mills is the father of two beautiful girls, one named Riley. Raleigh. Raleigh. Raleigh, Raleigh, excuse me. And Ellie. And Ellie. Yes. How old? Seven and nine. And they were very curious about this, about these do last Do they look at your pictures? Yes, they do. Yes, they do. They have a lot of questions about what the president was doing, why was there a soldier standing in front of Air Force One, is it always like that, why is the president holding the flag with a fireman? Um, they have a lot of questions and it's, it's, it's tough to, to um, shield them from a lot of the, the very dramatic pictures, you know, and, and they hear some of it at school, they hear from other older kids what's going on. And every night there are a lot of questions about it. I'm sure, I'm sure at every home in the United States there are a lot of questions of, by the children who are seeing the newspapers and our pictures every day. Doug Mills, Chief Washington Photographer for the Associated Press. Thank you very much for coming in today and showing us thank your photos. Appreciate thank it. I hope you'll come back and do it again. Be glad to. Thank you. Now we're going to take you live over to the Federal